Hello, welcome back to the channel. Great to see you here again. Now you will remember that quite a few weeks ago I invited you guys to send in your images that you've taken using my fine art light painting techniques. And to be honest, the response that I got from that video was quite overwhelming. In fact, so overwhelming that I've struggled to get my head around it. I've actually got hundreds of images. Now, as you can imagine, that's quite impractical for me to go through every single image and describe them and, and, and show you even. There's just way too many. It would take me 10 or 15 videos just dedicated to this, and, and I really don't have the time and space to do that. So today, what I'm going to do is try to attempt at least to address some of those uh, images and uh, show you what other people around the world are doing with their lighting techniques. So what I want to do today is, uh, look, I'm going to pick out certain images. I really apologize if your image doesn't get picked out in this video, but what I'm going to try and do is um, have another video or maybe two more videos, who knows how many videos, a little bit further down the track in between some of my other projects. So as we go today, I'm gonna to just pick out some images, go through those and probably put a collection of some of the other images together in into a kind of a slideshow and uh, just show you what we've come up with. So let's get into it. Well, I wanted to start with this particular image because it's one that I absolutely love and it really highlights some methods that I use myself when I'm light painting and creating a nightscape shot. Now, this is from a guy called Brad Tuckerman. I know Brad and he's, he's a great fella. And he took this image of his dad out on a campsite somewhere with the chainsaw in the foreground. And he's highlighted the chainsaw and the load of wood and his dad sitting there having a cuppa with the campfire and I absolutely love this. This is the essence of what a nightscape image should be. So uh, Brad's written here, hi Richard, I thought I'd send you this one. It's my favorite and best one I've taken so far and I call it the old still man. So there's the still chainsaw, I love it. The technical specs on this shot, the sky is 10 shots at f2.8, 13 second shutter speeds at ISO 3200. And what he's done there is stack those with, I think, Sequator. He hasn't said so, but I think that's what he's used. The foreground is six shots at F8, 13 second shutter speed at ISO 500. So he's done some light painting in each one of those images and six of them in total. He's done really well. And as I said, I absolutely love this particular image. Thanks a lot, Brad. And so our next image is from Torsten Mitschke. I hope I said that right. And this is a picture of a little old church called Holy Babara, I think it is. And this is located in East Germany near Gorlitz. He says, I've made a 30 second shot with ISO 100 at 15 millimeter F8 for the foreground. So it looks like it's just one single shot for the foreground. Uh, he's used a smartphone to light paint the window. So that's good, he's done a bit of light painting around inside, he's used his phone for that. And the sky was shot as a panorama with a 28 millimeter lens at f1.8 at ISO 3200. He's edited this in Lightroom and Photoshop. Now, uh, Torsten hasn't told me what camera system he's using, but uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. I think he's done a fantastic job. I can see Orion there on the left hand side behind the tree. I like how he's left the tree as a silhouette mainly uh, because that gives it that eerie look. It looks like it's at a cemetery uh, and I can see a little bit of lighting, the, the red light there behind. Uh, but overall, this is a fantastic image, not very complicated, but it just goes to show you don't have to be overly complicated to get a really, really nice shot. Very well done, Torsten. Our next image is a car. I love shooting cars under the light of the stars and you know that. This image is from Bjorn Hammerbuck and um, he sent it through. It's, it's called an Audi RS4 Cabrio under the Milky Way. And what a fantastic image. So his description, this is the summer car of my wife. Only 1,508 were built from the year 2006 to 2008. It was the first attempt after watching some of my tutorials. Okay, well it's pretty good for a first attempt. In this new moon summer night last July, I used my D850, that's a Nikon camera, with the Nikon 14-24 to f2.8 lens. 
and the 20 millimeter f 1.8 as well as the z6 and the 14 to 30 f4 okay so he's got two camera systems there this picture was taken with the nikon z6 at 16 millimeters ISO 6400 uh, f4 20 second shutter speed so this is one single shot illuminated with an LED to torch using an orange filter uh, developed quick and dirty with Snapseed not his usual method of using Lightroom and Photoshop so he's done it in Snapseed looks like he's done that on the phone but boy oh boy that's a good image I just love the the way he's done that and that's a single shot so it's a, it's a fair bit of work to get that in a single shot so really well done Bjorn love it the next shot is from Dieter Dam and he says hi Richard I love your images and your YouTube videos very much and already learned a lot so I'm following your call to send one of my light painted images okay this one was taken in Rota and Julicia gee I'm pretty bad with the pronunciation on a beach called Aguadulce gee I took 10 sky images and stacked them in Sequator. And after that, I took five more four grand images light painted with the torch. So he used a Sony RX10 Mark III. So this is a fixed lens camera. So it's a 24 to 600 millimeter focal length, it goes from f2.4 to f4. Now he's done uh, sky images at 8.8 .8 millimeter, which because this is a very small sensor camera that relates to 24 millimeters in full frame terms at f2.4 ISO 1600 for eight seconds the foreground so remember he took 10 sky images and the foreground images he took four five shots again at 24 millimeter f 5.6 at ISO 1600 eight second shutter speed hope you like it well Dieter I love it I think it's really good I love the beach love the rocks um, quite good you can see you've got a bit of uh, haze on the horizon there but that's what you get when you're near the ocean overall really really nice shot now Hugh Byrne has sent me through two images which I can show you both of them here the first one is he's called Cathedral Water Tower he's calling it a stone water tower in Cathedral Gorge Nevada I used a Nikon Z6 with a Tamron 15 to 30 f 2.8 g2 lens using your method I shot a series of Milky Way shots at 15 seconds f 2.8 ISO 5000 stacked these and shot another series refocused at f5 so this is the foreground at ISO 500 also for 15 seconds now the light painting is with a Knight Rider bicycle light with the CTO gel rubber banded to the front I know all about that the interior light was a small generic video light with a red towel covering it resulting in the orange glow and I really like how Hugh has actually created something there just using the red towel that's a really good thought now the second image is a railway bridge near uh, Caliente Nevada I think I've said that right that was shot on the same night with the same process and settings I was fortunate to get these shots before smoke from the California wildfires fires pretty much ended the Milky Way season for me back in 2020 so that's another great shot so I think Hugh has captured both of these images really really well I love that little bit of light pollution here which is highlighting the bridge structure but it's actually not destroying the detail in the Milky Way and that's one of the things that I love about shooting in locations just like this really well done Hugh now this one's a little bit different from Paul Byers and um, I included this because it was different to a lot of the other ones hello Richard my name's Paul Byers I live in the Lake District in the UK I've been following your channel for a couple of years now and getting tips and tricks watching the videos this is one I recently posted it's an old redundant church in Iribi Cumbria my original vision for the image was me holding a torch or shining a light in front of the church with the Milky Way towering above at the time I couldn't get the sky I wanted so once I got my tracker back in December I started to learn how to take better images of the sky I ended up taking an image of the Cygnus region from my back garden as we are still in lockdown the church itself would be facing in the exact direction I'd taken the sky image so I decided on putting the two together while I was at the church I light painted the church itself and the stone wall from the side giving it more definition in the brickwork I also used an off-camera flash to light myself and when in post I muted some of the colors so it gave the overall image a more gothic look and feel I added a touch of light to one of the windows to give the impression that the church was lived in 
Uh, the equipment used was a Nikon Z6 and a Nikon 105mm uh, micro lens for the foreground and a 50mm f1.8G lens for the sky using a Skywatch at Star Adventurer Mark II. The foreground is four 30 second exposures at f5.6 at ISO 500. The sky is 12 90 second shots at f4 ISO 1000 stacked in sequator. So that's quite a good explanation. Love the image, Paul. You've done a really, really good job. Thanks for sending it in. Okay, so here we have an Australian, John Carter. Now, John uh, is pretty prolific with his nightscape shooting and here's a couple that he sent through. There are two Im images here that are a stack of 20 images stacked in sequator after being edited in Lightroom using Alan Wallace Milky Way presets with some star reduction in Photoshop after being stacked. So he's using a Canon 6D with a 20 millimeter Sigma lens at f1.8. 20 second shutter speeds at ISO 5000. Now, uh, that's the first image. And the second image, a little bit different processing, slightly different um, look about it, but they're both really good. And I don't know if I could, would say one's better than the other, it's just different. You know, that's one thing that I like John's done here. He's actually um, processed the same image with two different processes. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's a good way of learning how to get the, the best out of any particular image. So uh, this is at Mullinger Swamp, which is just at the border of South Australia and Victoria, if you know that area. And uh, thanks, John. I really appreciate you sending these images through. So we have another Australian, Ian Inverarity, very prolific photographer, and he does fantastic work. His preferred method of lighting nights case is to use off-camera flash units with a controller on the camera that enables him to change the flash power from the controller rather than having to go out to each flash. He's saying, I usually use two or three units and take test shots until I'm happy with the lighting. So in this shot, I used a small handheld torch to light myself and the nearby landscape. The flash units are providing extra illumination of the tree and landscape, but do not overpower the small torch light. This shot is a three shot vertical panorama. 28 millimeter lens at f1.8 on full frame for 10 seconds each at ISO 3200. Now, Ian has a Nikon D810A. Um, so he's saying with the flash units firing after each shot. In this case, I fired the first shot at the bottom of the tree with myself in the frame using a remote. Then I stood the torch up on the ground near where I held it in the first shot, then went back to the camera to raise it up for the subsequent two shots. The resulting three shots were stitched and edited in Photoshop. The story behind this trip, he was becoming frustrated with windy conditions overnight, so planned some shots during the daytime that would work if it was windy that night. This tree was the one I planned to shoot if the wind was not too strong, as the native pine trees are quite stiff and move very little. That's a good idea. But this one is not very big. I had shot at another nearby site to set up for this tree as the wind wasn't too bad. Clouds had started to come in and looked to maybe getting worse. So he adjusted the flash brightness and his own position in the shot uh, until he was happy with it. Astronomical twilight was starting only about 15 minutes later. So I was all set up and thought I may as well stay around to see if I could get the shot as the sun started to light the horizon. The lighting changes minute by minute and what looks best changes in timing depending on the composition. So I take a shot every few minutes to see how this is changing and I think that's a great idea. Because of the altitude of the clouds, they get the sun a bit earlier. So the clouds started to get some nice sunrise colors. So this is a sunrise or pre-sunrise shoot. As the horizon started to get lighter and the sky changed color, and I was able to get this shot. I was glad I chose to stay around and wait for astronomical twilight. So Ian has raised a really good point there. Sometimes you've got to wait for something to happen. You might have to wait for the clouds to clear or you might have to wait for a bit of a glow in the sky, as in this case, with a bit of astronomical twilight. I love the color of the clouds. I love a lot of things about this shot. And you've gone into quite a lengthy description, which I really appreciate. Thanks heaps, Ian. So uh, a great supporter of my channel here is Royston and Wendy Palmer. So Royston has sent these images through. And he's saying, first of all, thanks Richard for taking the opportunity to allow me to show a couple of images with the inspirational and infectious nature that you give me and Wendy. Well, I appreciate that. 
Royston very much. So the first image is an old turret in County Kilkenny in Ireland. I went through there once on a trip. Anyway, so you can see the image here. It's stacked, blended and light painted. So what he's done, he shot the star trials at 30 shots at one minute. So that's one, uh, sorry, 30 minutes worth of star trials. And the foreground is eight shots light painted. He's used the Nikon D810, ISO 1500. I think what he means there is that the star trials are shot at ISO 1000 and the foreground at ISO 500. But Royston, you can correct me if I'm wrong there. This is shot at 24 millimeter focal length, the background at f3.5 and the foreground at f5, 15 second shutter speeds. He's using a Tamron 24 to 70 f2.8 G2 lens. Quite a lot of people are using that lens. So Royston continues, being under the stars is magical in itself, but when capturing star trials, it makes even more so, especially in front of this wonderful old turret. Now the second exposure, oh this is awesome, is a long exposure foreground image from the Dolomites in Italy. So he's blended it, same night, same position. So the stars are one shot, the foreground is six shots for light trials and the extra parts of the foreground. He's again shot this with the Nikon D810, the stars at ISO 6400, the foreground at ISO 2000. He shot this at 17 millimeters at f2.8. He's got 10 seconds and 20 seconds. I think that means 10 second shutter speed for the stars and 20 seconds for the foreground. And he's using a Tamron 17 to 35 f2.8 lens. Little story attached. On our very first visit to the Dolomites, I planned to take this photo and lucky for me, all the elements were aligned to fulfill my dream. Extremely delighted with the end result. A little about the location. Uh, Giao Pass is a high mountain pass in the Dolomites in the province of Belluno in Italy. It connects, oh gee, here we go, uh, Cortina di Apizzo with Colle uh, Santa Lucia and Selva di Cadore. And you can see I'm not Italian, although my name is. It is located at the center of a vast mountain pasture at the foot of Nivolo and Della Viru, from which you can easily reach the Monte Pore. Hope you're keeping well and spending some precious time under the stars. Well, I certainly am Royston and I love these images. Thanks so much to you and Wendy for sending them through. And our final image for this particular video is from Tim Bradley in Waterville, Washington. And this beautiful image is entitled Mars Rising Over the Old Farm. And I absolutely love this. Now, Tim has some awesome images on his website, which is timbradleyimaging.com. Just go and check it out. There's a lot of fantastic stuff there. But I'll read what Tim has written about this image. So as a working photographer, I've been working on a personal project to light paint old farmhouses and structures before they're all gone here in the West. My main objective is to shoot the buildings. The Milky Way is an added bonus to the finished photo. This abandoned farm is located in the wheat fields of central Washington here in the United States. I arrived late in the afternoon to reconnaissance my shooting locations, always checking for hazards like barbed wire, animal holes. You just don't want to find these things in the dark and I know all about that. Camera gear used for this image is the Canon 6D with a 24 to 105 f4 lens. Framing up the shot, I used the 105 millimeter focal length with a 30 second shutter speed at f5.6 for the buildings. Now, because the farm was spread out, it took nine single shots or layers of light painting with my handheld spotlight to get the total farm. Lights in the buildings were the small loom cubes placed inside. The sky was shot last. This is a 20 second exposure at f5.6 and also at 105 millimeters. These shots were sent into Lightroom and layered in Photoshop with a total of 10 images. Along with shooting old buildings, I'm also working on doing some environmental portraits with light painting technique. And as I said, if you check Tim's website, you'll see those. Oh, and by the way, uh, the ISO for the foreground subject was 200 and for the sky was 6,400. And I love the details. Now, Tim sent me through links to a lot of pictures, but uh, I chose this one. They're all fantastic, but I love the way that this draws your eye into each individual component of the image. And it's beautifully composed, beautifully shot, beautifully lit. 
So Tim, fantastic work. Now, I'm going to show you a slideshow from a number of other images. I've got dozens and dozens and dozens of these. I can't explain every single one, so we're just gonna go through a slideshow now and you can enjoy some other great images that have been sent to me. Well, I don't know about you, but I was totally inspired by the response to the call out for you guys to send in your images to the channel. And look, if your image didn't get uh, featured in this video, just hang in there because I am going to add some more videos as we progress through this year. So thank you so much for your support. I'd love you to subscribe to the channel. If you love this type of content, give me a thumbs up and maybe a like and a comment down below. I always love reading those. Now, as I said, I'm off on another road trip adventure and I've been so looking forward to this. I wanna energize myself, I wanna recharge my batteries and most of all, I wanna get out there under the stars in some epic locations and some awesome night skies and landscapes. So I'm gonna bring that to you. I'm gonna be away for a while, so there'll be a bit of a gap between videos uh, simply because I'm out shooting videos and making new content. Look forward to seeing you when I do. You look after yourselves, have a fantastic week. I'll see you later.